I'm going to uh, paint on my um, IKEA storage box draw thing that I I've had in my room for like a really long time. I just think that right now it looks too plain compared to all the f other things in my room. I hope you enjoy watching me paint on it. So uh, just to show you what the box looks like now, this is it. Um, it has some stickers here in the drawers and some other stuff on this drawer. And then there's some pictures here on the side and some other pictures on the other side. And then underneath there's like some notes. And then I have all my descendant stuff here on top of it. I've uh, made these uh, sketches of uh, kind of how I want the drawers and sides and different sections to look like. Each section is going to be dedicated to a different fandom and I managed to fit 13 different sections on here. So as you can see I've written like the fandom, which drawer it's supposed to be on, and then there's the sketch. So there is a series of unfortunate events, Pretty Little Liars, H2O, Once Upon a Time, Manifest, Full Slash Fuller House, Descendants, Harry Potter, Team Star Kid, Miley Cyrus, Percy Jackson, Glee, and Disney Channel. Okay, let's get started by first removing these pens from the drawer and then also removing the stickers on top. The stickers were surprisingly easy to get off. I really thought I would ruin them, but yay, I didn't. Um, but the peace sign was a nightmare because it was contact glued on there, but eventually it got off. So the first draw I'm painting here is the series of unfortunate events one and I'm using these acrylic paints to paint on there and I'm also sometimes using this paint, so kind of a mixture between those two. I started by adding the red paint until I realized that it's a good idea to put white paint underneath to not have to make several layers of the red paint. So as you can see here on the sketch, I'm going for this fiery background with uh, the VFD I logo on top and the quote, the world is quiet here. So I'm actually really bad at painting fire, so I'm really happy about how this turned out. It doesn't exactly look like fire, but it's got the feel to it. I'm using these Posca pins to draw the things on top with, and here I'm just using them to write the words and also drawing in the eye. Or the logo or the VFD logo or yeah, you know. Um, after I had finished this, I still thought it looked a bit too plain, so I decided to add in some more details with the colors orange, yellow and red to kind of match the fiery theme. And I'm adding some lines and some dots and it also annoyed me that the word world wasn't really straight, so I kind of tried to make some lines and stuff to even it out a bit and in the end I just kind of made a whole burning building theme. I also added a white outline around everything to kind of make it pop which I really regret because I think it looked better before but well yeah. And then I just added some varnish glue to make it a bit more glossy and also to seal in the paint and here it is! Okay, next draw. This is the manifest one and again I'm just starting out by removing the sticker. As you can see here on the sketch, it's pretty much like the manifest banner with the light blue background and the white clouds to make the sky and then the manifest plane 828 and center and the big blue manifest letters at the bottom. On the original banner, there's also the main characters on there, but I decided to just go with the plane and the letters. So just drawing in the plane with this dark, kind of dark blue color and adding some white too. I switched a bit between paintbrush and Posca pens uh, depending on which area I was working on, a big area, a small area, an outline, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then I started working on the letters. I kind of like to just draw in a, a thin line first to make sure it's spaced out right and if I make a mistake like there I can easily fix it up before drawing them in figure just to make it easier to correct mistakes and then I can do this and it looks like that. And I decided to make a black outline instead because I had some blue and blue and you wouldn't really be able to see it with a blue outline and I didn't want to have two different kinds of outline so I made it all black. I'm just changing up the wings a bit because I had looked at the picture wrong. 
and I had to change it to make it right. And just drawing in the small details and fixing some things up and making a blue line, a lighter blue line and then adding some varnish glue and here it is. The next draw is the Pretty Little Liars one and as you can see on the sketch it's just this black background with a lot of letters on it. Um, it says Liars down the middle and then it has the five names of the five main characters connecting to the word Liars. And this is pretty much a design that you see everywhere but I thought it could be fun to put it on here. So it's just taking the names and, you know, connecting one letter to the word liars. And then the A is like A as in A. I still thought it looked a bit too plain just being like this. So I decided to add some lines around the edge. Four white lines for L-I-R-S and one red line for A. And then I also decided to make some A's all around the draw to kind of fill out the empty space. And adding some glue and here it is. Time for the Harry Potter draw. So as you can see in the sketch I've decided to just make a black background again and then write Harry Potter in the middle like it is uh, in the movie titles and then make something that references each book around it. So there's the Philosopher's Stone, the Basilisk from Chamber of Secrets, the Time Turner, Travis the Cop Phoenix because Order of the Phoenix, the Half-Blood Princess book and the Deadly Hallows. So here I'm just starting on the stone and I really had no idea how to make this so I just kind of started adding red and black on top of each other and eventually it got this transparent feel that I was hoping for which is pretty loggy since I actually had no idea what I was doing. Um, yeah, and then I started working on the basilisk, just drawing in the outline to kind of figure out the spacing of it. And here I'm just using a toothpick because I didn't have this green in Posca pen, so I had to just use regular paint for it. And then starting on the details on the basilisk. While waiting for that to dry, I started working on the time turner, so I could like jump back and forth between those. And also because I didn't really know how to make the basilisk, so sometimes I just needed a bit of time to think about it, and then I could just go and work on the time turner. So this is actually my first time using Posca pins, and I really, really love them. I'm used to just using toothpicks whenever I wanted to draw in details, but you can't really draw as smoothly, and it's also so much quicker to use Posca pins, and you know, it's just... Uh, two entirely different things so you can't really compare them but toothpicks are still great for drawing in thin lines but I really really love Posca pins <laughs> so here I'm just starting on the cup and um, yeah just drawing in that and those handles right there I just couldn't figure out how to make them. Like I would make one that looked okay, but then I just couldn't get the other one to look the same. So that took some some time to make that. So I just started working on all the other things uh, because I had to wait for, wait for different things to dry. And also because I didn't know how to make the texture of the basilisk. So I also had to think about that for a moment. So just drawing in the Deadly Hallows and finally getting those handles right and then I started on the phoenix and that also took so long because it just couldn't make it look good. I don't know what happened but I just I just couldn't but so yeah so I had to to wait for that to dry and dry and then work on something else while I waited. So here I'm just working on the letters in the Half Dark Princess book with a toothpick because a Pasca pin was too thick to make those small letters. And then I finally decided on the texture of the basilisk, which was just making black paint, like putting black paint all over it. And finally I got the phoenix to look okay. And I made those uh, thick black lines around the book, which I thought didn't look good. So I decided to make them thin instead with the foot to pick. And then also doing that around the cup, adding in the details on the book. 
and some red on the phoenix and the eye and then just finishing up the details. I also decided to add another shade of blue to kind of make the transparent look and then just finishing up everything and putting on some glue and here it is. Next up is the Once Upon a Time Girl. For this one, I've just chosen to have the front page of the Once Upon a Time book in the show. So to make that brown background color, I had to mix it up myself. And I'm not really that good at mixing colors. So as I'm trying to show you here, I didn't add in enough red paint. So it's not exactly the same color, but it's still brown. And then I started working on the edge design. The the sign is the same on all four sides, so I'm just showing you what I did on one side and then I repeated it on the other three sides. And here I'm also using a food toothpick because um, uh, the, the, the drawer wasn't really that big, so if I used a Posca pin, the lines would just take up so much space that I don't think I would have enough space to write once upon a time in the middle. And it just looked better that they were thinner like this. And also... I had thought about maybe making the spine of the book on there and maybe some pages because this drawer was much longer than the original book. But in the end I decided that this was the design I wanted and I was just gonna have to make it work somehow. So starting on the corner. And this is also the same on each side. Like it's just the same all the way around. I'm making those things and then I started measuring up where to where to put the letters so that I had space for two lines and I was gonna use my Posca pens for this but the gold was different from the other paint I had so it would just look weird to have two different kinds of of gold so I decided to just go with the reg regular paint and it wasn't actually supposed to be this big a gap between once and a pun, but uh, I hadn't really thought about it and then I made it and I just, yeah, I didn't think it was a big enough mistake to change it up. So I just kept it like that and made sure to also have a gap between A and time. And then I started working on the details on those first letters with black. And the design for those were really detailed. The O wasn't that bad and the U was okay, but the T was really detailed. So it was really hard to get it all on there in such a small space. So you can't really see, but but it's still like you can see there's supposed to be some kind of design and I think that's okay. And I also made a black outline around all the other letters. So it took some time for me to make the tea because it was a bit difficult, you know, to to get everything in there. But eventually it just looked okay. It looked a bit different from the other letters because there was so much more black on the gold than on the two others. So I tried to even that out a bit. But in the end I just had to keep it like it was because I couldn't really change up that much more about it. And putting on the glue and here it is. The last and biggest draw is the Team Star Kid one. I didn't have any stickers on this one, but I still had a lot of things I needed to remove from there. So looking at the sketch, I've chosen to have the Star Kid logo with the black background and the firework kind of colors, and then the Star Kid logo in the middle. And then around the Star Kid logo have the title of every one of the musicals that they have done, and also Little White Lie. So just starting out by making the Star Kid logo here. And then working on the Firebringer one. I decided to change up the position of the musicals a bit from what I did on the sketch because I had written senior year down here on the sketch, but then I realized that the the title for a very part of senior year set a very part of senior year and then there wasn't space for it down there so i just changed it up and then i changed a bit of the other things too and i also realized later that 
some of the logos for a Harry Potter sequel and a Harry Potter musical says a Harry Potter sequel, but I'm pretty happy that I just kept it like this because if I had written it all, I probably wouldn't have had space for it since I wrote it a bit too big to like it was already difficult for me to fit all the musicals in here. The Black Friday one was nice and easy to make, just white. And then I started working on me and my jelly. Yeah, that was a apocalypto reference. I'm proud of anyone who understood that. And then working on the Starship logo, which was not easy. Probably because I made it at this angle, but I kind of had to do that to fit everything in there. And the Starship logo is pretty much like the Star Kid one. So I kind of knew what I was doing. And on this one, that video right there, I just tried to show you that I made a black outline around it at some point. But I didn't have it on video, so I just put in that I did it. And then working on the Little White Lie one, I didn't really have space to put all of the Little White Lie lo white logo on there. Because it has these curly ends, but since... Uh, it had to fit in like this, I it would have to be way too big if I had to put that in too, so I just ended it out there and made sure I could just write the little white lie. And then I outlined it with a different blue because I didn't have the Posca pin blue in other paints, so but I had to use the, the toothpick for that one because I had to make really thin lines, but they're kind of similar. And then working on the very part of senior year, I also changed up the position here a bit because I was running out of space and I just had to put in the musicals which there was space for on here. But that was maybe a mistake because then it was really difficult to fit the rest of the musicals on the other side because then I, then I couldn't choose from, from what was left and I just had to get all of them in there and they were kind of the biggest ones. And I also changed up the starship of camera a bit because I thought it looked a bit weird and I still don't exactly like it, but now it at least looks better. And then I worked under a Harry Potter musical one. This was a bit difficult because I wanted it to line up with the Harry Potter sequel one. And I thought it did at this point, but I realized later that it's still further down than that one. But then I had already painted it all and I didn't want to change it up. I just, you don't really notice it that well, so it's okay. And then working on... The guy who didn't like musicals. This was really fun to make, I thought, by making these lines. And I just got so much into it that I made it way too big. And I was always, like, I already didn't have enough space for everything. And then I made the guy who didn't like musicals too big. So you can see why that was a problem. And here I had to use the toothpick too because I didn't have two different shades of green in Posca pen. So just to have that. I did it like that and around the small letters I just had to make an outline because I couldn't really make the it like that since even the toothpick was too big. To try to fit everything in there I had to write the untold story of Royal Lycia really really small so I could keep it in that space or else I wouldn't be able to fit everything on there. And I realized too late that I shouldn't have started it like all the way at the edge because then there wasn't space for the top of the T. But I didn't change it up, so the T is just smaller, and that's also why it took me so long to work out the T. And also making the little lamp. So as you can see, I'm changing up the T a few times, and it just ended up being like that, since I didn't want to erase it all. And I could have moved it a bit to the side, but I had already made all of it when I realized it. And I'm so sorry for my head being in the way here. I tried to cut out the bitch with my head in the way, but to be honest, my head was in the way all the time. But So I had to cut in out big pieces because sometimes my head was all over everything. Like, you couldn't even see what I was doing. I don't know what happened in this one. But making the trills Aragon one. It was a bit difficult to try and fade the two colors together because when I uh, kind of tried to do it, the paint just went off. And I just kept doing it until there was enough paint, but it went off all the time. So it's not really blended together, but it's kind of blended together. And then making the Holy Musical Batman. This 
had to overlap a bit with their very part of musical one, which I wasn't that happy about since it was the only thing that overlapped then. But some of the others is really close together, so I thought it was okay. And I could have moved it a bit up, but I realized that too late too, and I didn't want to change it all up again. So, And then working on Annie, which is the last one. And again, the Pasco pin was too thick to make to write a paradise, so I had to go in with the toothpick later to make it still took up too much space, but like from the picture, but it's okay like that. It it works. I'm working on the handle details. And then finally putting on the glue, and here it is. I really think this turned out great, and I managed to fit every musical on there, and that's a, a success in itself, I think. Here we have them, the finished painted drawers. So, in order to not make this video very, very long, or very, very speeded up, I've decided to split it into two videos. This one where I painted the drawers, and in the next one, which will be posted next week, I will be painting on the sides. So, well, thanks for watching, and I hope you will want to watch my next video too. Bye!